I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on simple and compound interest. If you want to learn from me, you can always send me an email on the address given here. In this series, we are going to take up many concepts about simple and compound interest. And later videos, we'll take up examples from previous test questions. We'll then talk about annuity and recurring deposits. Now, simple interest is the interest on the money invested. It is also paid when you borrow the money. So both ways, you're paying an interest. Simple interest is the interest paid only on the amount which you borrow or you invest. We call this amount as the principal amount. So whenever we talk about an amount which is called principal amount, in that case, this is the amount which you initially deposit or you borrow. So that is called a principal amount. Compound interest is paid on interest over interest also. So in compound interest, you basically earn the interest on the principal amount and also on the interest which was paid on the principal amount. We call that as an accumulated interest. So compound interest is the interest earned on principal and the accumulated interest. Broadly speaking, simple, is simple interest, when you deposit something and you get simple interest, then it is that the money grows kind of linearly, just based on what you have invested or you have borrowed. So, so it's like a straight line. Simple interest represents a straight line. So this is the amount which earns simple interest. However, the compound interest is based on what was the existing money, which included the accumulated interest also. And therefore, that graph is an exponential graph. So, so there's a huge difference in the earnings from simple and compound interest. We'll actually explore this in more details. Now we'll talk about what these simple and compound interests are. We'll begin with a formula list. We'll understand many parameters and then find interest, find maturity value. We'll learn the concept about the compound interest. Compounding periods could vary. We'll look into those compounding periods. We'll also discuss continuous compounding then effective rate is a very good concept or which is not really discussed many times, but we are going to discuss what is effective rate. And definitely we'll talk about present value. When we are investing some money, then most of the time the money which you which matures is called the maturity value or the future value. Correct? Now sometimes you make an investment for a purpose. For example, you may have to pay for the tuition, university tuition, right? In that case, you may start saving now. So what is the present value which could match up your requirement after some years? That is the present value, which is very interesting. And then we'll also look into the doubling time, the rule of 72. And here we'll also see how logarithms can be utilized to find the time required for are doing the investment. Okay, so let's begin with the formula list itself. So as I was saying, simple interest is charged or earned only on the principal amount. So we'll refer the principal amount with letter capital P. Now note, the rate of interest R is the decimal equivalent and the time is always in years. So this is very important. Normally, we will say that the rate of interest R is equal to, let's say, 8%. So in our calculations, we are going to use the value 8 over 100, which is 0 0.08. Is that clear to you? So that becomes the interest rate. So decimal equivalent of the percent, right? So if R is equals to, let's say, 1% uh, 
then the decimal equivalent will be 0 0.01 and that is the value which is going to be used perfect so i hope you understood this process time t is also very important to understand time t will be in years so so if i say uh, let us say if i say t is equal to 90 days in that case you have to convert this right so 90 over 365 years so be careful in using these parameters r is the decimal equivalent and t is the time period defined in years right you have to always convert to years now the the formula sheet gives you all the formulas here simple interest is i equals to p r t where p is the principal amount r is the rate of interest in decimals t is time in years and future value or the maturity value is the amount a which is principal plus prt which is p into 1 plus rt now talking about the compound interest as you know compound interest is the interest earned on initial principal and the accumulated interest from the previous periods so the total amount a after the initial investment of p at an annual rate of r compounded n number of times per year is given in this particular relation now here very important is compounded n number of years so the compound interest we are mainly interested in the compounding periods how many times in a year is the interest calculated and compounded correct so accordingly we have different formulas there is actually one formula which is uh, this is your general formula right which is uh, let me just highlight the general formula which is compound n times per year the formula here is amount a equals to principal p within brackets 1 plus r over n to the power of n t right so where n is the number of times it is compounded in a year perfect if n is equal to 1 we say compounded annually that means n equals to 1 correct so if n is 1 then we have a simpler formula to work with which is a equals to p times 1 plus r to the power of t now if the compounding is continuous we have a very special formula which is p e to the power of r t now this uh, is beyond derivation for this particular lesson but we do have uh, proof for this also so you can look into my videos which involves a bit of calculus uh, to find this particular formula from the above formula which is uh, a equals to p 1 plus r over n n t right when you say continuously we are basically saying that the value of n approaches infinitely large value so in that case this formula reduces to that correct so that is what the condition is okay now let's take some examples and understand better simple interest first so let's review a few more concepts about simple interest simple interest is charged or earned only on the principal amount p so so the interest earned is on principal amount it also is proportional to time you invest the money correct so interest i earned is proportional to amount invested and time t right this is kind of important it is actually proportional right more you invest more you earn more time you put that investment for more interest you get so now this proportionality sign can be changed by equal to sign provided we have a constant correct so we have written i equals to p r t so clearly r is the in this case defined as rate of interest is proportionality constant you get the idea right so it's a constant of proportionality so i equals to prt is the interest earned on p invested at annual rate of r for n years right so i should write for t years not n years t years okay since we have used t here now if that is the interest right if this is the interest then the amount will be what you have to add principal to the interest when you add it you get p plus p r t p can be taken as a common factor within brackets we get 1 plus r t 
now that is also called the future value of this amount p correct so in future after the investment it grows and then this will be the future value of the amount t correct of the amount p so based on this let's have an example sam borrowed thousand dollars at 12 percent simple interest for seven months how much interest will he pay find the total amount he repaid so when you borrow money on interest you then you have to pay the interest you have to pay the principal both together is the total amount to be repaid right so that is our basic question so in this case the principal amount is thousand dollars rate of interest is 12 percent which is converted to decimal value 0.12 time period of seven months is also converted to years seven over 12 now this is very important do you understand so every time you have to have a decimal value for r and the time period in years so the formula for interest is i equals to prt substitute the values and calculate so in this case simple calculation 70 dollars is the interest right so that's what we get now amount which needs to be repaid will be thousand plus 70 dollars right which is 1070 so he needs to pay 1070 after seven months correct now here you also observe that in simple interest the money is growing or the payment is increasing linearly right so this is a linear relation this is very important to understand now so simple interest is an example of direct variation with proportionality of constant as interest rate correct so if you have a graph to represent the simple interest then the interest i with time t for any investment will be a straight line correct so if uh, the time is zero it is kind of zero correct so it will be a straight line so it's a linear function correct interest now if you want to say what is the amount p so amount p this interest is going to be added to whatever so that could be the if that is the interest amount in that case a I should write amount A with time with this initial value of P, right? So if you invest P dollars, in that case, your amount will, after at any instance of time will be shown by this particular line, correct? So that is how they are related. Now let's talk about the future value. That is when you invest something, what will be the value? The future value of an investment of five thousand dollars at the rate of r percent simple interest for 11 months is dollars 5366.67 find the rate of interest at which the amount was invested so now we need to rework on the formula we have to do the reverse calculation since the idea is to find r now right so the formula was a equals to p plus prt which where the interest is prt right a minus p so from here r is a minus p over pt so that is how you could easily calculate the rate of interest knowing money invested the matured value and the time duration so that's what we have done here we know that the amount maturity amount is 5366.67 time is given to us as 11 months so convert that to years and we know that interest is prt right so so we can just find the interest difference between the amount and the principal invested gives you the interest and this is prt so dividing the whole thing by uh, time and principal you get your value of rate of interest now whatever rate of interest you get that is the decimal value you have to report the percent value in the answer right so so that is how you're going to write the simple interest which in this case comes out to eight percent is that clear to you so rearrange to find the value of r so for that matter the formula can be rearranged to find any of the other parameters let's take the next example which is based on maturity value example three 
find the maturity value of a loan of 10,000 to be repaid in 40 weeks with interest of 8% per annum. Now, when we say 40 weeks, then how will you convert this to years? Well, 40 weeks means there are 52 weeks in a year. Do you see that? So, 52 weeks per year. And that is how you are doing the conversion. Correct? So, that is what we will do. So, first step definitely is to convert this uh, period, time period to years. Right? So, that is what we have done. And then you can apply the formula and find the answer. The important thing under, to understand is the maturity value itself. So maturity value of A is the same as the future value of the principal amount P after the interest I is added to it. Right? So that is what the maturity value is and it is given by the formula P times 1 plus RT. Now in our case we know the principal is 10,000. 1 and 0 0.08 decimal equivalent of 8%, 40 over 52 is conversion of weeks into time period of years. And when you calculate this, you get your amount and that becomes your maturity value, right? Now let's take the next example, which is example 4 for us. Now, in this particular case, the maturity value of a loan is a loan of 8,000 at ordinary interest is of 8% per annum was 8160. Now, there is a new term here which is ordinary interest, right? And we're talking about days. Find the number, find the maturity period in terms of number of days. Now, normally, you know that we have 365 days per year, correct? Now, for approximate calculations, we normally use 360 days per year. So, that becomes the, the ordinary days, right? So, this is not the exact value. So, when you use 360 days per year, then we are talking about the ordinary interest okay so it's an approximate calculation easy calculation to do many times and it really helps so again the maturity value of loan of 8000 at ordinary interest of 8% per annum was 8160 find the maturity period in terms of number of days d right so in this case when you convert you have to use 360 as the number of days in a year so that is what it is okay now, the interest calculated by considering 360 days in a year is called ordinary interest. So, the exact interest is calculated by considering 365 days in a year. So, normally in the question, you use the exact interest which corresponds to 365 days in a year. Okay. So, we are given principal P amount also. Rate of interest is 8%. Equivalent decimal is 0.08 time will take as d divided by 360 as we're talking about ordinary period substituting the same things in the formula and rearranging you can find d which comes out to 90 days is that clear to you so have a good look at it and see how we have done it we purposely did not cancel many values here since i wanted to show you uh, that you know 8 times 8 is 64 so we get 640 d divided by 360 and then we did not simplify we just kept it as such. Then use a calculator or simplify it to get the answer. Right. Now, uh, we have taken up uh, examples about simple interest. Now, let's understand what the compound interest is. So, we begin with the concept itself. Definition definitely is compound interest is the interest earned on initial principal and the accumulated interest from previous periods. The question here is, consider, rather I should say as an explanation of understanding the formula of compound interest rather than any particular example. Is that clear to you? So this example pertains to understanding the formula of compound interest and compounded amount. Consider dollar P is deposited at R percent interest compounded annually, right? So once in a year, they are compounded. 
at the end of the first year, the amount will be A equals to P times 1 plus RD. It's like a simple interest for the first year since there's only principal amount, right? And now it becomes P times 1 plus R. Now, after this, you know, this was like a simple interest. After this, it is compound interest since the interest is being paid on the principal plus the interest. That is to say that now the, the amount to be considered will be P into 1 plus R for the next year. Do you get the idea, right? So, at the end of the first year, the amount was P into 1 plus R. At the end of the second year, interest will be earned on P times 1 plus R, the initial principal and the accumulated interest from the previous year. So again, when you apply the same formula to calculate the, the amount, it will be P into 1 plus R, which is same as the amount existing, right, times, now the interest on this will be 1 plus R T, right? Then you get the total amount and that results into P times 1 plus R square, right? So at the end of second year, your amount is accumulated and the principal now grows uh, at a much higher rate, right? 1 plus R square it becomes. Similarly, in the third year, the amount will be, when you multiply by, again, a factor of 1 plus R, you get 1 plus R cube, correct? So in general, if T is the number of years you're compounding it for, it will be P times 1 plus R to the power of T. And that is how we get this particular formula, correct? Now clearly, what do you observe here? Now, you must have noticed that simple interest, as we talked about, was basically a linear function, right? And the compound interest is an exponential function since we have that exponent t, right? So this is kind of very important to understand. And once again, let me again sketch the same graph. So when we're talking about the interest itself, in that case, interest when taking into account for the principal value will be a straight line as shown. However, the compound interest will be an exponential function, right? So this is compound. And the other one is simple. So there is a huge difference uh, based on the compounding cycles, right? That the amount grows with time. Is that clear to you, right? So that is to be kept in mind. So once again, the same graph is there to understand the concept. Here, we're talking about the amount A, right? Since we are starting with the principal P with time t in years. Okay, the question here is, find the amount of interest earned by a deposit of $1,000 for a period of eight years at simple interest of 5% per annum and compound interest of 5% per annum. So we have the same interest rate. As you can see, the value of R is equals to 0 0.05, the decimal equivalent of 5%, but we have two different scenarios. One is the simple interest. The other one is the compound interest, correct? So let's calculate both. For simple interest, uh, the value, uh, the amount will be A. We can use this particular formula and find the amount. Uh, find the amount of interest we wanted to find. So we could actually only calculate the interest also in this particular case. There was no need to do this calculation. However, it helps when we are working with the compound interest formula, right? So mainly because we have to compare and find what is the compound interest, what we did was we find the amount and then the difference to find the interest. You get the idea. So since it was necessary here, to find the future value, right? Compounded amount. We have also shown it for simple interest. However, it was not necessary to show this step for simple interest, okay? But this is to keep them parallel. So simple interest, if you compound, if you find the amount which it grows to, it will be 1000 times 1 plus 0 0.5 times 
eight, uh, which is the time period uh, in years, and the amount is fourteen hundred dollars. On the other hand, if the same amount is compounded, we get fourteen seventy seven point four six. So let's say somewhere here is our point, correct? So what we are saying here is that this particular difference, which is the interest earned for both, this particular difference is is what this 477.46 is. You see that? So this interest, that is the interest earned when we started with the same amount for the same interest rate over a period of, in this case, eight years. Does make sense to you, right? So the amount grows, of course, and the interest earn is very different. And that is why we have these two linear and exponential graphs shown again and again to, you know, emphasize on the point that the compounding periods make a difference. Now, here is student's activity. Uh, I'd like you to pause the video at this stage, copy the particular question, solve, and then look into my suggestions. Students' activity is, Anil deposits $1,000 into a savings account that pays compound interest annually. The table shows the annual balance for his investment at the end of each year. Find the first difference between the values. Find the ratio of consecutive amounts. Explain the concept of compound interest. Calculate the interest rate provided by the bank, right? So here it's like a ledger, right? Passbook. So what Anil has done is deposited $1,000. So we are saying just zero means uh, it is year, let's say 1st of January, you deposit this in 2000. Now, let's say 2001, the amount becomes 1060. And then in 2002, it becomes 102360. And so it grows as shown here every year. So end of the year we're talking about, correct? So this is the end of first year, right? End of second year, that's the amount. Now, first difference, let's try to understand what is first difference. Uh, first difference will be uh, y2 minus y1. So these are the values, correct? So let's say if this value is, let me call this value is, let's say, a0. This is a1, a2, a3. Amounts at the end of each year written with the subscript. Then the first difference will be, you have to find what is a1 minus a0 equals to, what is a2 minus a1 equals to, and so on. So that is the first difference which you need to figure out, correct? So that is the difference between these two. You can write down the difference between these two to see how much the money grows every year, correct? So that difference will actually sh give you what? Will give you the interest earned, correct? Because it is growing only because of the interest earned. So that gives you the interest run. The second part of this question here is, let me put it in a different color. We'll just show it here also. Second part of the question is, find the ratio of consecutive terms. So the ratio which we're talking about is what? So you can say, what is A1 over A0 equals to, right? So you can write down here. And similarly, you can say, what is A2 over A1 equals to, correct? A3 over A2 equals to. So likewise, you can find the ratio. Now, in this particular case, you will see that this ratio is constant. So here, the amount is growing. It's like a geometric progression. Do you see that? It's like geometric progression. And from here, you can actually find the interest rate. So I hope you have understood the concept. You can actually now pause the video, answer this particular question, the part C and D, and then check with my solution. Clear? Now here is the solution itself. So let me once again explain what we have done here. So we found the difference between, we did what is 1060 minus 1000, correct? And we got a value equals to $60, correct? So that is basically the interest earned in the first year. Now in the second year, when we did this difference, we got 6360. Do you see that interest is increasing, right? So we notice that interest 
is increasing. Now, do you get an idea by how much? Well, it is not 60. You will see this interest here is basically 60 plus 360. Do you see that? So 360, which is the extra amount earned in the second year, is mainly because we have interest on interest, right? So we have interest on interest. And that is what we call compounding. And that's why we get the name compound interest, right? So the amount is compounded because we have got interest on interest. You get the idea, correct? So, so it increases. So this amount of 360, which is an additional amount here, is mainly because it is the interest on $60, additional interest. So it is 60 plus something. So everywhere you will find in the calculation that we are increasing by an amount which is 60 plus something. Do you understand this? 60 plus. And this plus is the additional amount which is on accumulated interest. And that's where the definition comes into play. So this gives you a fairly good idea about how the amounts grow when compounded, right? So we have taken a simple case, annually compounded, but we could have uh, bro broken it down into uh, monthly or bi-weekly or whatever. Okay, now, so that gives you the idea about the interest, correct? And definitely, we see that in this process, the amount is growing based on the amount which was existing previous year's end, right? Now, second part is the ratio part. So when you took the ratio, we found that the ratio is constant, right? So if the ratio is constant, that means it is like a geometric series, correct? So this means geometric series. So, or we can say geometric um, sequence. And in this particular geometric sequence, we have a constant by which it is being multiplied. And this constant is the rate of interest, is that the rate of growth, correct? You may say a growth factor also, okay? So this is like, now we can say, um, let me summarize here. So what we got here is that the first difference indicates the interest earned each year, right? So this is the interest earned each year. We have noticed that the interest is earned on the investment and on the interest also, correct? So that's the first part. Second part is uh, the ratio 1.06 indicates that it is a nonlinear function, right? Exponential growth by a factor of 1.06. So this growth factor of 1.06 gives you 6% interest. You know how? Like this, 1 plus 0 0.06, correct? So this is equivalent to 1 plus 6 percent. Is that clear to you? 0 0.06 is 6 percent. And that is how we get this. So that helps us to answer this question. So now we can say calculate the interest rate provided by the bank. It is 6 percent. And explain the concept of compound interest, which I just explained, how it grows, right? So interest on interest being paid. Correct? Now, I'd like you to now uh, write down and explain all the things which I have done and submit this as an assignment. So this should be an assignment for you, okay? So I, so I hope you have good concept about uh, compound interest and the how the amount grows. Now, let's talk about compounding period. In previous example, the amount was compounded annually, but it could be compounded uh, many times during the year. And so we have some common terms which we are going to discuss. Compounding period. Interest can be compounded more than once per year. Common compounding periods, which we say N, are semi-annually. So as the name signify, semi means two, so twice a year. Quarterly, four times a year. Monthly, every month. So that means N is 12. Daily, there are 365 days, so n becomes 365 continuously. When every second it is being compounded, we say, well, when n approaches infinitely large value, correct? So when n approaches infinitely large value, we have a different formula altogether, and the formula is A equals to P 
e to the power of r t. The derivation of this is not is beyond the course understanding. We actually do it in calculus. Okay, but the other formula is now getting modified. Do you see the formula is the general formula? A is principal amount plus one plus r over n exponent is n t. Now try to understand this. Now here, since the compounding period, see. If we say that compounding period is quarterly, in that case, what happens? In that case, the rate of interest R is to be divided by 4, correct? Because this rate is annual, right? Remember, R is annual, where R is per annum. So when we use in our formula, R is divided by 4. So it becomes quarterly, right? So quarterly, it will be R by 4. And also the time period, the time period is not one year now, correct? So the time period is quarter of a cycle. So in one year, it will be compounded four times, right? So, so the time period gets four times the time t. You understand? Because it is being compounded four times. Do you understand? So compounded four times in a year at the interest rate, which is quarter of the annual interest rate. So that is how the formula gets really modified. So that is the understanding. Sometimes we use different terms here. We use capital N and I for interest, right? But we have maintained the same values. However, um, we have used uh, the same thing in a different way. Okay. Now let's take up examples to understand how to use this particular formula. So here we'll calculate the future value, which is the value it grows to. Find the future value of an investment of $1,000 at 5% interest after six years if the interest is compounded annually, quarterly, monthly, and continuously. So we can use all the four formulas now and find the solution. I'd like you to pause the video, calculate, and then check with my solution. So when we say annually, then the formula is this basically, correct? N is equal to 1. Since N is 1, it is much simpler. A equals to P times 1 plus R to the power of T, substitute the values and you get your answer, which comes to $1340.96. Quarterly means N is 4. Substitute 4 for N in this particular formula and time T is 6 years, right? So, so we know all these values. Let me write down the values here first. Let's say P is equal to $1000, correct? And R is 5%, which really means 0.05 and time t is 6 years, correct? It is already given in years. So we'll substitute these values and based on n, we'll have a different answer altogether. And definitely, if n is large, we get a larger value. So n being 4, we got 1347.35 instead of 1340. So $7.35 is the extra amount, around $7 is the extra amount which is being earned. Perfect. Now, compound it quarterly, uh, monthly I should have written here, sorry. So, let me correct this. Compound it monthly. There are 12 months. So, in a year, 12 times it will be compounded. N equals to 12. Substituting N equals to 12, we get 1349.02, a slightly higher value. Perfect. When you do it continuously, the formula is an exponential function. P e to the power of rt. All are exponential, but here the base is e. Now, that comes to 1349.86. So, I hope you can appreciate the difference. If the compounding period is increased, then the amount grows faster. That's the whole idea. Now, we'll consider the present value. Let us say we know what the future value is. We will find what should be its equivalent present value? We use this example many times. For example, 
uh, you have to, let us say, have some funds for retirement, and you know your expenses are going to be that much, and you need that much amount in your bank, then how much should you save today? So those are the kind of questions where the present value become very important to calculate. The question here is, find the amount to be invested today at 4% interest to be 10,000 after 6 years. Right? So when we do not mention anything, then the interest rate is per annum, compounded per annum. <clears throat> so we are given the amount A and now we need to find the principal P. So we are doing the reverse calculation. And this principal P is your present value. So N is equals to 1. So the formula is A equals to P, 1 plus R to the power of T. You can always rearrange and find the value of P, which will be much lesser than 10,000. So you need to invest much lesser now since you will earn interest over it for your money to get accumulated to the required amount, right? That's the whole idea. So you could also rearrange your formula, have a fresh look at it. So that's the formula. So P will be A over 1 plus R to the power of T, correct? So $1.7903.15 is the present value for $10,000. So that was annual. We have taken another example where the interest rate is compounded quarterly, correct? Now the question is, find the amount to be invested today at 4% interest compounded quarterly to be 10,000 after 6 years. Similar question, the N value has been changed to 4 this time. Okay, so let me rewrite this. 4, and once you change it to 4, uh, we know even lesser amount has to be uh, invested today since it will be compounded four times in a year and so over six period six years it will be compounded 24 times correct so that is the whole idea so again the same formula calculate and then get your result now here is a very interesting aspect we have been saying eight percent eight percent but the idea is that eight percent actually is slightly more than eight percent if it is compounded more number of times in a year. So based on that, we have an effective rate. So we'll now understand this new term, effective rate. Find the effective rate corresponding to the stated rate of 8% compounded quarterly. We're talking about two things now, effective rate and the stated rate. So normally the rate stated in the question is always called the stated rate, right? Which is like 8%, right? Actually written. Effective is what value it really gives to one dollar which you invest right so per dollar it is not just eight percent it is more as we will see in this particular case now we are compounding it quarterly that means n is equal to four correct so so we know that now n is equals to four so in our formula we'll use n as four so we can calculate the value of one dollar so effective rate is the compounded interest on $1 deposited over a period of one year. Okay? So the effective rate is, this becomes the formula then, difference between, uh, you know, uh, the amount you invested and amount it grows to at the end of the year. When you say 8%, you expect that $1 will become $1.08, correct? So let us see how much it really becomes, okay? So here we go. So the interest rate uh, will be now uh, calculated 8%. So we'll write a decimal equivalent of 8%, which is 0 0.08 quarterly period, 4, right? And 1 year, so t equals to 1. r equals to 0 0.08. Substitute these values. So when you substitute, you get that the amount actually becomes 0 0.08243, correct? So effective rate is... 8.24, not just 8%. You get the idea, right? Because if it was 8%, the amount would have grown to 1.08. But now it is not 1.08. It is 1.0824. So it is more than that. So this is called the effective rate. So here is uh, the explanation. If dollar one is deposited at the rate of 8%, compounded quarterly, then at the end of the year, its value is 1.0824, an increase of 8.24% on the investment. This increase is higher than the stated value of 8%. To differentiate between these two, 
8% is called the nominal or the stated rate of interest and 8.24 is called the effective rate of interest per annum, right? So, in many applications, when we talk about financial cases, it is also called effective, let me highlight this, effective rate of annual percentage rate, which is also called APR, right? So, basically, we have to compare with APR when we are given the compound interest and the compounding periods, okay? So, it's very important to understand this particular concept. Effective rate is slightly higher than the stated rate if the compounding period is more than one, right? As the interest is earned on the interest. Perfect. So, let's take an example based on this. How do we compare uh, these effective rates? So, the example is bank A charges 11.2% interest compounded semi-annually and bank B charges 11% interest compounded monthly. Which bank is providing better rate to borrow, right? So better rate to borrow. So we are looking for lesser rate to borrow, okay? Now, it clearly shows 11% could be a better rate, but let's really find what the effective rate is, right? Effectively, what do you pay? That is what is important. So effective rate comparison can help take the decision for better rate, clear? Effective rate corresponding to the stated rate R, this is the stated rate, is RE, which is 1 plus R over N to the power of N minus 1. So compounding is important here, right? And time T is, you know, 1. So basically, we have substituted here in our formula T equals to 1, correct? So calculating for both the values. So 11.2% means what? 11.2% basically is R equals to 0 0.112, correct? So which we have, and in this case, N is equals to 2. Since it is compounded semi-annually, correct? Semi-annually means N is 2. And we did calculate, it comes to 11.513%, right? That's the calculation. Now, let's do it monthly for the second case. So which is 11%. Compounded monthly. So when you're compounding monthly, it is 12, correct? So let me write down here monthly. That means n is equals to 12. Substituting 12 here, we get a value which is 11.571%. So clearly, we have 11.571 is greater than 11.513, right? So they are charging more interest, right? So higher interest means higher charges, correct? You have to pay that to the bank, so higher charges. So therefore, this is a better option, correct? So it may not look like when you compare the numbers as such, but effectively 11.2%, which is based on semi-annual, is far better than 11%, which is based on monthly, correct? So that is a very good calculation, important calculation. So bank A provides lower effective rate than bank B, although the stated rate is higher, correct? Now, here is the last example. We'll actually see how logarithms can be used to find the value of T. We are going to explore this formula more in the following examples. We will talk about annuities. Example 12, doubling period. So, I'll also explain you another rule, which is called the rule of 72 with the help of this example. An investment of $1,000 grows at a rate of 9% per year find the number of years it would take for the investment be almost 2000. So almost 2000 basically means double, right? So from 1000 to 2000, we are trying to say double. Perfect. So basically we need to find double, double, and we need to find what is the time which makes you, makes your money double, right? So the future value for the investment is given by A equals to P, times 1 plus r to the power of t, where a is 2000, p is 1000, r is 0 0.09, the decimal equivalent of 9%. We need to show, or we need to solve the equation for time t by taking the logarithm. See, t is exponential. Logarithms are inverse of exponential functions, so they will help you to solve. So 2000 equals to 1000 times 1 plus 0 0.09 to the power of t, calculating cancel 1000, 1000, 2 equals to this, take log, log of 2 
and then we have used the property of log here, right? Log of 1 plus, you could write 1.09 to the power of t. t, so that is the power rule for logarithms, right? Okay, so we get t times log of 1.09 and t is log 2 divided by log of 1.09. When you calculate t is approximately equals to 8, right? 8 years, 8.0. So we see that in eight years, it works out. So the two important things, 9% and eight years, right? So when you multiply eight times nine, what do you get? 72, correct? So that is the rule of 72. So you can estimate the value, right? Uh, it will not be more than 2000, slightly less, but though close to, right? So in this case, it is close to 2000, right? In eight years. You could do this calculation with different percent rates just to see how close you are, but you'll be pretty close. So in eight years, the investment will be close to double the amount invested at 9%. The exact value is 8.043. You could always convert this to months and then figure the answer. So this is called the rule of 72. The product of interest rate and the time to double is almost 72. That's the rule. Exponential equations can be solved using this technique of taking logarithms on both the sides and then isolating the index or the exponent. So this technique is very important to so try to understand and do more questions based on this particular technique and basically to find time t. Is it okay? So what is the time t? Use logarithms to do it. Perfect. So with that, we come to an end of our video on uh, understanding what are simple interest, what are compound interest. How does the money grow in these two cases? So I hope that gives you a very good foundation to begin with. Try to do questions from your book and then let's move forward to NUTs. I hope that helps. Feel free to write your comment, share your views. You can always visit my website, globalmathinstitute.com and you can also contact me on the email address as mentioned earlier to learn more from me. Thanks for your time once again. All the best.